from Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Alina Howder. The city of Billings was sizzling with a hot start to summer today, with hotels like the Doubletree packed from people attending weekend events, like the annual Pride Parade to Yams Arts and Crafts Center and even a dog show. MTN's Matt Carmack has a closer look. If you're trying to stay in Billings this week, good luck. It has been absolutely crazy. Hotels across the city are so packed. I have never experienced quite so many sold out nights before in my entire hospitality career. This Thursday marked the official start of summer and here this Saturday in Billings, a multitude of events are happening to corroborate the new season. Like right now, I'm at the Yellowstone Art Museum's annual summer fair, which is one of many events to happen just today. For the 46th year in a row, the Yellowstone Art Museum celebrated arts and crafts with their annual Summer Fair Festival. From handmade earrings to live music and spinning wheels, craft lovers across the city gathered at the Metro for this two-day event. Also at the Metro today was the Yellowstone Valley Kennel Club Dog Show. Plenty of professional pups gathered for a walk around the barricade and an inspection of their teeth and coats. Meanwhile, North Park celebrated their grand reopening. Members of the community gathered for food trucks, live music, paintball, and more. Not to mention shady trees provided a cool place to sit in the warm sun. Finally, the end of Pride Week is of course marked by the annual Pride Parade and Festival. Lasting until 7 p.m., Broadway was filled with color, glamour, and of course, pride. But at the end of the day, today was about more than just events and activity. The community gathered together and kept the city of Billings magical. And as you can see, there was no reason to be bored here today in Billings. Now today it will just be one of many of days filled with activities and events. And of course, days like today are the reason that Billings is the magic city that it is. At Pride Under Sky Point, Matt Carmack, MTN News. From the parade downtown to a drag show tonight, there's a lot of pride in the state's largest city. Here's MTN's Diane Parker with a behind the scenes look at the drag culture here in Montana. Drag in Montana is often misunderstood, that according to many in the LGBT community. They say it's a very important part of Pride Month though, and it's not stopping our state's top drag queens from spreading a message of joy and resilience. Who was the first trans black woman to be elected to public office? From Queer Trivia Night at Sacred Grounds Coffee Shop in Billings. Um, drag culture is so deeply like rooted in black queer history. So I'm just really happy to be here and I hope we have a good time. Two historical callbacks citing the 1969 Stonewall Inn start of the pride movement. Pride started out as a riot. Pride started out as police raids in clubs that were wrongful. Many drag performers in Montana are unofficially tasked with being the holders of queer history. It's a mix of a celebration of us just being happy to be here. It can be very solemn because we know why we're here too. Through the art of drag, Onyx Echo is delivering messages all across Montana. Montana is a very big state, very small group of performers. Her medium, makeup, and costume meticulously applied. It's theater, it's performance, it's acting, it's an aspect of modeling, it's fashion. But all of that, Onyx says, is decades behind the rest of the nation. Doing drag in Montana is very similar to like doing drag in like the 90s or like the 2000s. It's still very controversial and still pretty underground. The show's not as frequent and stepping outside the performance venue can still be dangerous. If we go like out after, um, especially in Bozeman, sometimes in Helena, you'll get the, um, the slurs people will act like they're about to jump you. For this drag queen, remembering the history she holds paired with pop star moments keeps her moving forward. The people that I run with are really good people that just want to perform, maybe make some money and then go home. To me, I'm just being like Britney Spears for four minutes and then, and then I'm done. But those minutes matter to anyone hoping for a future free to express themselves. In Billings, Diane Parker, MTN News. 
If you are driving down Broadwater Avenue today, it probably took you a little longer than usual. After an accident with a truck and an SUV on Broadwater and 19th Street West around 1 p.m., traffic was backed up while Billings Police spent part of the afternoon diverting drivers. And good Saturday afternoon, everyone. A little bit quieter day today than yesterday, but we've still had some showers and thunderstorms bubbling up over parts of South Central and Southeastern Montana. Had a couple showers that were trying to bubble up just to the west of Billings, but they kind of fell apart fairly quickly. And then late last night, we had some showers and storms that were on this same path across parts of Muscle Shell, Treasure, and Rosebud County. They were moving over Melstone and Forsyth, now quickly moving to the south of Miles City. And both Miles City and Baker had a lot of active weather during the wee hours of the night last night from about 1 until 2.30 in the morning. Mile City had over an inch of rain, also gusts up over 40 miles an hour. And Baker from about 3.30 until 5 this morning also had some strong wind gusts between 40 and 50 miles an hour and 1.4 inches of rain. But now you can see what was happening over Dawson County and Weibo County. That's now moving into parts of western North Dakota. We have other changes in our forecast instead of a lot of heat too. I have your forecast. The Yellowstone Radio Club made radio waves at Zoo Montana today for Field Day, a national event that encourages radio users to make contacts with each other all over the world for 24 hours. Our Isabel Sparts met with a group this afternoon to learn how ham radio works and why it's still so important. The radio might be seen as a dying form of media today, especially when our cell phones can make contacts in seconds. But what happens when service goes down during times of emergency? That's where radio shines. Yeah. There's no short of stories to be shared in the world of radio. It's a big, huge community out here. And a ham radio is how this group from the Yellowstone Radio Club prefers to communicate. Basically, we're going to send a signal through the air. It's going to bounce off of certain parts of the atmosphere and come back down, and we'll talk to someone on the other end. The group is participating in Field Day, where people worldwide communicate for 24 hours through ham radio. Kilo 7, Echo, Foxtrot Alpha. From noon Saturday to noon Sunday, the group will be at Zoo Montana testing their equipment to make as many contacts as possible, both through digital and Morse code. The more contacts, the more points their club receives. It's an emergency exercise. That's what we kind of get bonus points for um, and credit for, but it's also a contest, so there's a there's points. You can, the, more, the more stations you talk to on the air, the, the more points you get and the more points you get, the bragging rights you get for beating all the other clubs in the state of Montana. In times of disaster, you can count on the radio to stand strong. The object is to go out into the field on emergency power in adverse conditions and operate the radios. Uh, it gives us good practice for uh, emergencies that we do get called out for each year. What might seem like old-fashioned technology is actually a lot more complicated than one might expect. And I'm sending a CQ which says, uh, you know, I'm calling anybody I want to talk to. And just now I get a call coming in from N1MG. He's over in Minnesota. I can tell by the, the grid call that, he, uh, that, he, that he's from. And so he's, uh, his computer talks to my computer and they exchange signal reports. And for the club's president, John McCabe, radio is more than just communication. The radio, to me, I needed something that I could remember my father from. Now, his call sign, K7IKC, he got that in uh, somewhere around 1948. And he passed away a few years ago, but before he did, I studied like crazy and got my license. So I am the second person to be authorized to use K7IKC on the, on the airwaves. It's a shared interest that brings waves of people together. You make friends out there and you don't even know the person and you'll never see him the rest of your life. You'll never see him at all. Your whole lifetime, you don't know who they are. But you know the call sign. It's just that kind of a thing. Signing out in Billings, Isabel Sparts, MTN News. Montana Early V8 Club and Magic City Model A's hosted more than 60 classic cars for a car show at the Den Sports Bar. Among those cars were vehicles dating back nearly 100 years. Our Marcus Kakova spoke with the car enthusiasts who shared why events like these are about more than just showing off. Well, this is our, uh, our first uh, annual car show here at the Den. One might expect violent engine roars from muscle car shapes at most car shows across America. Cruising down the road, it just purrs, you know, the motor just purrs. The Model A uh, is just a four-cylinder engine that uh, followed the uh, Model T, 100 years old almost. It breaks once in a while, but 
We break this one. Home to more than 70 quieter, much older classic cars, Billings Magic City Model A Club doesn't use muscle to turn heads. They'll, you know, do a double take. It's just fun to see smiles on people's faces when they go by and wave and honk. And driving your Altima, what are they going to do? <laughs> Same thing they do with our Camry. Who cares? It's a car. You can look back on and see the pride that people had in their workmanship. For the 92 members of the club, like Scott Waltner, the Model A is a reminder of what's come before like Scott's father, who passed away in 2022. I've got a 1930 standard roadster that my dad had, and I'm restoring it. Why is that important to you? Because he never got it done. Typically appealing to a more classic generation of driver, the club regularly holds memorial runs in honor of its members who have passed away. This is what we're going to do that day and think about what we did with them when they were with us. It's just great seeing what's out there, that people care about the past. Marcus Kakova, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, you don't have to travel back in time to witness the Battle of Little Bighorn. Find out how next. Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. There's still one more day to check out the monumental reenactment of the Battle of the Little Bighorn happening at 1 in the afternoon on Sunday, putting on a show of what occurred 148 years ago. Our Haley Monaco spoke with those writing in the reenactment. Crowds are gathering to watch the Battle of the Little Bighorn reenactment that participants have been prepping for for days. We're just having a great time. This is a great experience. Land rich with history. You get shivers, you know, sometimes enjoying the different sights and sounds and locations where, where history happened. And riders with historical ties. I have a, a relative, Major Marcus Reno. My uh, great, great uncle was uh, First Lieutenant Algernon Smith. He was in uh, charge of Company E. These are members of the U.S. Calvary School who train anyone from beginner to expert for the battle. It's, it's really nice to take somebody that knows nothing to get them to be able to ride in a reenactment like this. We teach uh, people to come out here and ride for five days of training and uh, they graduate by uh, dying in the reenactment. A battle reenactment that wouldn't be possible without the real birds, the Crow family who has put on the show for years. And this is the Indian version that we do. All of the spirituality of the Indian, and that's what we, we uh, portray here. Spanning for over three decades, filled with rich memories. We had a battle with a little bighorn in 1990, and our first custer was a motorcycle driver that just came down the road and, and camped with us, and he's from Chicago. In Crow Agency, Haley Monaco, MTN News. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.